Hey everyone! Today has been a long time coming for me. My Eidobau ID80 finally arrived after about three months of being in shipping limbo. There's a few things that really interested me with this particular keyboard. The first major one was that it is in a 75% form factor. When I built my first PC back in November of 2019, I picked up a new keyboard to go along with it, which ended up being the Drivo Grammar, a budget keyboard with the same 75% form factor. This meant that I had effectively the same function as a 10 keyless keyboard, but in a much more compact size. After using the Grammar for about eight months, I don't think I could go back to a full-sized keyboard because it just feels so much better to have your mouse hand closer to your keyboard when you're gaming. Obviously, there is the limitation of no longer having a numpad, but I'm also quite used to the top number row after using a laptop throughout my university career, so it hasn't been too much of a change. Now, this is a fully aluminum case, and it feels incredibly sturdy to the touch. There is zero flex in the board at all, which gives it a nicer, more premium feel. The ID80 doesn't have any legs to change the angle in which you type at, however, the case itself has an angle which I find personally very comfortable to type on. Alright, let's open it up and see what's on the back. Now, when you open up the ID80, one thing you'll notice is near the function row and going down, there is a massive amount of space between the PCB and the back plate. The other thing you'll notice is closer to the space bar, there is much less of a gap between the PCB and the back plate. This has led to some community concerns or some community comments that the ID80 has a very hollow and pingy sound when you type. And we're going to look at trying to dampen that a little bit so that the typing experience is a little better. Also, when we weigh the case in the PCB, it comes in at 894 grams, or just shy of 2 pounds. Now, compare this to a fully built GMMK TKL with keycaps and switches, that comes in at 831 grams. The ID80 is significantly heavier, at a smaller form factor, and not even built yet. Also, when you compare it to the all-plastic Drivo Grammar, the ID80 is 279 grams heavier. The second big reason why this keyboard was so interesting to me was the fact that it is also hot-swappable. To my knowledge, this is the only 75% form factor that comes with hot-swap sockets as standard. This is a big plus for me, as I don't have any soldering experience, nor access to any soldering equipment at the moment. For now, the best alternative for me is something that is effectively plug and play, and the Eidobau ID80 fits the bill. Now the last thing I wanted to mention before we get to the build is the stabilizers that came with the ID80. These stabilizers are plate mount stabilizers, and they were the only option when I ordered the keyboard back in March. Since then, they have given the option between plate mount and or PCB mount for the stabilizer. And looking back, if I had that option, I would probably go with the PCB mount. That being said, I have clipped and lubed these stabilizers, and I think I've got them sounding pretty well, as you'll see in the sound test later on. For the switches on this build, I decided to go with a linear switch, specifically the Cherry MX Black. A colleague of mine recommended linear switches to me, and I decided to give them a go just to see what they were like. The Cherry MX Black is a slightly heavier switch as compared to the more common Cherry MX Red, but I was looking for something that maybe had a little bit more of that tactile feedback, even if it's just a stiffer spring. What I also did was I lubed the switches with Crytox 205 Grade 0, as the reputation for Cherry amongst the keyboard community is that they can be a little bit scratchy out of the box. 
I've purchased a 5 milliliter bottle of Crytox from a local Canadian vendor, and I'll be able to fully lube another set of switches for another build in the future with that amount. For keycaps, I went with the Enjoy PBT Grey Japanese White keycaps from KBD Fans. Um, as the name implies, these are PBT keycaps, which have personally, I think, a really great feel and nice quality for the price that you pay for. I also think that the white on black is hard to go wrong, so I think overall it's a good look. Building the ID80 was super, super easy. Much like the GMMK, it is really just plug and play. One thing that you'll want to keep in mind when you are assembling a hot swap board like an ID80 is just making sure that your pins are straight when you are inserting them into the PCB. Otherwise, you might not register a key press when you are testing the keyboard when you've plugged it into the computer. And I know it probably wasn't necessary for the video, but I really liked the black on black look of the switches in the board, hence why I have this shot. To finish the build, I added three artisan keycaps that I received for my birthday a few weeks ago. I really like the way that these look, and the quality and craftsmanship is obvious there with the detail on each one of these keycaps. I'll have a link to these keycap vendors in the description below. Okay, let's talk about the sound dampening that I used for the ID80. I had this old packing material from a TV I purchased a few years ago kicking around in my basement, and I thought this would be a good way to test a budget way of dampening the ID80. So what I did was I took strips of it, measured it to the back plate of the ID80, and then just cut to size and inserted as, men, as much as I could into the actual case itself. There wasn't a lot of room by the end of setting this all up and by the end of it, I think it did make quite a big difference when it came to dulling that pingy hollowness that the ID80 was known for. A couple of other things that I've heard work quite well in this regard are sorbethane that you can purchase at like a home hardware store, or I do know KB Defense just released a modular foam that you can add to the back of your case to fit in between your case and your PCB. Personally, I wanted to see if I could come up with a solution with what I had on hand at my home, and I think right now it does the trick.
fully built, the ID80 comes in at 1,149 grams. Well, let's see if all that effort was worth it. Here's the sound test. Overall, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with the end result. I was initially pretty frustrated with this whole process just because of how long it took to ship from China to Canada. However, we are in the middle of a pandemic, so I think it's pretty easy to forgive that. I'm really happy with the switches I chose, the keycaps I chose, and overall for both typing and gaming, this keyboard is excellent. So would highly recommend for anybody considering getting into a custom board or the custom scene this is a great entry point and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always thanks so much and i look forward to seeing you in the next video cheers